Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Coming to you live from Long Island, New York. I finally got my hands on the full internal affairs report from the Connecticut State Police regarding the incident with Sergeant Fahey outside of the Connecticut State Police headquarters. Trust me, you guys are not going to want to miss this one. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, guys. So first things first, I wanted to show you guys the remind you and refresh your memory of the exact details because context is important. So I want to remind you guys of the exact details of the incident that happened on July 23rd, 2021 in front of the Connecticut State Police headquarters. So a little a little preamble is that I was, you know, illegally detained in the Bradley International Airport for 20 minutes under for not committing a crime. I was put in handcuffs, forced to identify myself under threat of arrest. I went to the Connecticut State Police headquarters to file an internal affairs complaint. Seems pretty reasonable to me that I would think that the Connecticut State Police headquarters would house internal affairs. So I went there to file a complaint and uh, I met Sergeant Fahey and this is what happened. And I want you to pay very close attention to what's going on here because as I'm reading to you, Sergeant Fahey and Trooper Costello, who's right in front of you right there, as I'm reading to you their statements, I want you to really think back on this video. The full video will be linked in the description as well as the from the airport incident and as well as my follow up video at the deputy chief uh, state attorney's office. But I want you guys to see this video, you know, and really pay attention to it for those who haven't seen it. So when we read the report, you know what's going on. Let's do it. Yes, sir. How you doing? Sir? How you doing, sir? You videotaping me? Uh, yes, yes, I am. I don't want to talk to you. Then, if you want to videotape me, then if you want to talk to me like a man, we but, can but, chat. But what, what about problem. what about you guys wear body cameras here? What's the difference? I don't have a body camera. I, like I understand that. What? Can I get your name, Sergeant? Yeah, Brian Fahey. Brian Fahey. Brian Fahey. So, have a great day. You too. Nice talking to you. You as well. I'll be there when you get there. You're all set here. Excuse me. Are you all set here? Well, yeah, there's nothing else, obviously, you can help me out with at this okay. point. Okay, so you're all set. So you can, you're going to go to IA right now, correct? Yeah, I'll okay. be there. All right. I'm going to be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be going. Okay. So you're going to stand I, here with your cell phone. I thought, I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should, you should get to work. I should, I should get to work. Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. We're going to have a problem between you and I. Yeah. His body camera's on. His body camera's on. Stop. He has his body camera on. I don't care. Stop, I don't care. Right? I'm gonna get... This is private property. I'm, gonna... okay? I'm not doing anything. You're not going to video me and have an attitude. I'll get off of it. I'll get off of it. I'm going to tell you what right now, dude. I'm not the one. Okay? I gave you the information you needed, and I gave you your outlet. I told you. No, you want to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face with what you wanted to do. Yes, you do. Take your cell phone and go and make your complaint. Okay. 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 Can I grab no, my cell phone? No, you stay right here. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. All right. Where's, Where's your car? Where's that, your car? Man? Where's your car? I'm going to go, man. I'm going. I'm going. All right, no, you, but where's your car? I didn't even know where my car is at. You were about to arrest me, man, for real? I, I, I has your body camera you. on? Yeah, my body camera is on, buddy. I'm Trooper Castell, 1139. Yeah. Wow. Listen, with the situation you were going to arrest going, me for real? We're going to detain you or what the situation was going on, man. You hear me? I'm leaving. over. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. So as you just saw, he started off, you know, pretty cordial. You know, he was very busy and didn't want to take my complaint. And he's trying to tell me that Internal Affairs is an inside police headquarters. And, you know, from the jump, he didn't want, obviously, me recording him. Let's talk man to man. You know, let's talk man to man. Because you're not a man unless you're talking off of camera. Imagine if I didn't record that situation, what would have happened to me? It's actually scary, honestly. But what's even more scary and more troubling, and honestly, it's quite comical, the full internal affairs report. So let's get into that. Now, keep in mind what you just watched. And now let's read this internal affairs report together. I am not going to read the full thing. But in order for, you know, to promote transparency, full transparency in the situation, I did upload it to longislandaudit.com. It is 21 pages long, and I uploaded the full 21 pages to longislandaudit.com news and documents. You can read it there if that's what you want to do. 
but I'm just going to read a couple of, I'm going to read Trooper Costello, who's the one who pulled out his handcuffs and said I was interfering with my own assault. <laughs> and um, I'm going to read his statement, Brian Fahey's statement, and some bootlickers who happened to be, you know, next to the incident, how they lied and, you know, trying to cover for the police. So let's get into it. Okay. So this is the Trooper Matthew Costello's explanatory memorandum on august on friday august 27th i was instructed by you to provide an explanatory memorandum regarding my actions and involvement on an incident that occurred july 23rd 2021 i am making this statement or report for administrative purposes only i have done so in compliance with an order of a supervisor this statement re slash report in no way constitutes any waiver of my rights under the current collective bargaining agreement, the U United States Constitution, and the Connecticut's Constitution. It's funny. They want to invoke the Constitution when it comes to their rights, but not ours, right? But uh, keep going. And this cannot be used against me in any subsequent criminal proceeding or civil or administrative procedure outside of the Connecticut State Police Department. For the month of July, I volunteered to take the front desk position in the state police headquarters for Troop L. At approximately 11.05 hours, a male who was later identified to be Sean Paul Reyes, who will now be identified as Reyes, Reyes approached the front door of the state police headquarters located in Middletown, Connecticut. Reyes wanted to make a complaint about a situation that occurred with a trooper at Bradley International Airport. It should be noted that the Special Licensing and Firearms Unit was very busy this day. The line for the special licensing unit was wrapped around the building. So far, he's telling the truth. Um, I called Legal Affairs via, tel via telephone and informed Legal about Reyes. Legal informed me to give him the uniform civilian complaint report, and if he had any questions, to have Reyes give them a call. At approximately 11.08 hours, I informed Reyes that if he would like to make a complaint, he would need to fill out a complaint form, which I provided to him. I noticed that Reyes wanted to go wanted to wanted to go inside the building while recording. I informed him that he could not record inside the building and Reyes asked, why can't I film inside? I stated, I am not 100% sure. I just know you cannot film inside. It is state property. I then stated, you can film out here outside of the building all you want, referring to the front of the state police headquarters. Reyes said, okay, let's do it that way. I noticed that Reyes was recording, so I informed him that I would be recording as well. Thank God for that. Reyes explained to me that he was filming at the Bradley International Airport for a story and then that I that didn't like it. This is where the TSA story comes in. So I'm going to skip past because this is not what this is really about. Um, but it is scary to say he, I stated to Reyes it could because remember, I was the, I was put in handcuffs because I wouldn't identify myself because I didn't commit any crimes at the airport. I stated to Reyes, it could possibly be interfering with an officer if an officer asks you for your driver's license or some type of form to identify you. Then Reyes stated, it's so scary that you're even saying that. 100% it is scary. Another trooper who doesn't know the law and doesn't know our constitutional rights. I was attempting to inform Reyes that it states under CGS 53-167A, a person is guilty of interfering with an officer when such person obstructs, resists, hinders, or endangers any peace officer or official duties. That doesn't mean that I have to provide my name without reasonable articulable suspicion, Trooper Costello. You need to learn the law. Um, then we go, Reyes informed me that his constitutional rights, that it was his constitutional right, and he, done, he did not need to provide his identification to the trooper at the airport. I noticed that the conversation was leading to other questions and noticed Reyes trying to create an argument by stating, I am not trying to get into debate with you. That is really trying to create an argument. <laughs> No, not at all, sir. Reyes then stated, I know the law. Therefore, I went back into the building and informed a trooper to get a sergeant due to Reyes' complaint. Sergeant Fahey arrived and spoke with Reyes. Reyes explained to Sergeant Fahey that he would like to make a complaint. Sergeant Fahey explained that we do not take complaints in person at this location, that Reyes, ha Reyes already had the form. Reyes then asked to speak with somebody from Legal Affairs, which Sergeant Fahey provided him with the address and their location. Reyes stood in front of the door to the entrance of the building, and Sergeant Fahey asked him if there was anything else he could do to help him. Sergeant Fahey explained that if he did not have any further business being there, then he could leave the premises. Reyes explained that there was nothing Sergeant Fahey could further help him with. Reyes st then stated that Sergeant Fahey could go back to work. He could. The whole time he's telling me how busy he is, he can go back to work. I don't think, what's so wrong with that? He said he was busy, but yet he wants to stay outside and harass me. I'm in a public space. Reyes repeated himself by saying Sergeant Fahey should get back to work if he was not busy. True. 
Reyes, Sergeant Fahey reached out towards Reyes, and then Reyes' cell phone fell from his hand. <laughs> My cell phone fell from his hand. Did we watch the same video that uh, he's referring to? It's crazy. I attempted to remove Reyes verbally from the prom premises and from bystanders who were waiting to conduct their business. I repeatedly requested that Reyes step back. I requested this multiple times until Reyes was on a grassy roundabout in front of the building. During this time, I obtained my handcuffs preparing to detain Reyes if it should become necessary because I was interfering with my own assault. Ladies and gentlemen, the video speaks for itself. It should be noted that Reyes asked, oh, were you were going to arrest me? I explained to him that I was I was not going to arrest him. I was going to detain him. A detainment is an arrest, Trooper Costello. Sergeant Fahey went back to pick up Reyes' phone from the mulch and gave it to Trooper First Class 1320, who then gave it back to Reyes. To my knowledge, Sar Sergeant Fahey, Trooper First Class, nor I turned off Reyes' cell phone. I offered to escort him from the building to his vehicle, but he said he would leave. He continued expressing his thoughts on the situation that occurred. Reyes then returned to his vehicle and departed the area without further incident. It should be noted that during this incident, my body-worn camera captured what occurred. And it also should be noted that prior to the incident, Reyes was causing a disturbance with civilians who were waiting in line for their pistol permits. Please refer to the obtained sworn statement. And then this is a, this is a sworn statement by a bootlicker her name is Carly Anita Bowers. A summary of the statement is as follows. I provided Trooper Costello a sworn written statement on what I heard and observed on today's date. A male that was wearing a black shirt, dark shorts, black sneakers, a baseball cap, and a beard. Terrifying. This man was pacing in front of the state police headquarters recording and talking to his phone. I observed the man recording from the observation of his screen on the phone. The man then walked up to the trooper, and the trooper was explaining what he needed to do. Then Sergeant Fahey came to speak to the man. Sergeant Fahey asked the man to put his phone away, and we can talk. Yeah, because if we're recording, if we're exercising our constitutional rights, you know, that's talking like men, and that's the right thing to do, according to Sergeant Fahey. And the man pointed out that the trooper had on a body camera and explained, so do I. The trooper then gave the man information on where to make the complaint and fill out his form. At this point, the man was still going on recording. It should be noting that the, noted that the man was putting the phone into the sergeant's face. Let me repeat that. It should be noted that the man was putting the phone into the sergeant's face. It had to be approximately, approximately five inches away from the sergeant's face. During this time, that is when Sergeant... The sergeant asked him to leave, and that is when the man started to become aggressive with the sergeant and the trooper that were on the scene. The man dropped his phone as he was being escorted off the premises. It should be noted that I did not feel comfortable with this random man recording myself in a public space. I, I was so scared of this man. <laughs> That's me. But um, And my eight-month-old child. I don't even remember this woman or a child, but okay. The man was pacing back and forth, making myself feel unsafe at state police headquarters. This man was making a scene and wanted the attention. It was obvious. I want to take a moment. I want to take a moment and state that this trooper and the sergeant handled the situation accordingly from my observation. Hey, um, I just want to say, Carly, Carly Bowers, what's your name and badge number? Because, or what's your husband's name and badge number? Because <laughs> this doesn't even add up to the video evidence. And real quick, I forgot, guys. Shout out to Keith, my buddy Keith. He's a good friend of mine. He's Northeast Auditor. His information's in the description. I would have never got my hands on this amazing report. It gets better without him. So shout out to him. Keith, I hope you're watching. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Okay. So now let's go to the man of the hour, Sergeant Fahey's explanatory memorandum. <laughs> Sir, I'm making, he says the same thing that Trooper Costello did. He's making this statement for administrative purposes only. He's not waiving his rights under the United States Constitution, Connecticut Constitution, and this cannot be used in a criminal proceeding or any civil proceeding, only administrative procedure outside the Connecticut State Police Department, blah, blah, blah. This memo was response to your request to detail my actions during an incident at Connecticut State Police Headquarters. Again, this is Sergeant Fahey talking, the man of the hour, guys, so let's pay attention. The incident was captured on body-worn camera of Trooper Costello. On July 23rd, I was working in the day shift and was one of the two sergeants assigned to the Special Licensing and Firearms Unit at Connecticut P State Police Headquarters in Middletown. 
at approximately 11, 15 hours, the front desk trooper, Trooper Casello, came into the unit and advised me that there was a guy at the front of the building asking to speak with the supervisor. Trooper Costello would come into the unit from time to time and ask me to speak with somebody out front, so his request on the above date wasn't out of the ordinary. As Trooper Costello and I were walking through the front lobby, Costello identified the individual wishing to speak with me, and at that time I made contact with a male party who was standing just outside the front door. I immediately noticed that this individual was holding a cell phone. Oh my God, a cell phone. How scary is that, Sergeant Fahey? You have the blue line tat, you know, the blue line skull, the thin blue line skull on your arm tatted. You seem like a tough guy. I thought you were a blue line gang member, but a cell phone seems to scare all of you guys. Uh, approximately chest high and appeared to be videotaping our, intera our interaction. Excuse me. I asked this person if he was videotaping me, and he responded yes, that he was a journalist and he wanted to make a complaint about a violation of his civil rights. As he began to explain his complaint to me, I stopped him and asked him if he had anything to do with firearms. I explained that I was the sergeant in special licensing firearms unit and not in internal affairs. He asked to speak with somebody in internal affairs and said he knew they were in this building. I explained that IA was not in this building. I gave him the address and explained where the IA building was located on the property. He continued to record me as I stood at the front door waiting for him to leave. At one point, he told me I should get back to work as he put the camera closer to my face. Complete and utter lie. How were they allowed to get away with this? We, the people, need to hold them accountable. I got closer to his face with my camera. Are you kidding me? There is no way he's watching the same video I'm watching. Wow. As he put the camera closer to my face, I told him that he and I were going to have a problem. I then reached up to move his hand away. Through my training and experience as a law enforcement officer, I know that cell phones can be altered and modified to be used as a taser or a firearm through his training as the supervisor of the special licensing and firearms division of the Connecticut state police. He thought that my iPhone 13 was a taser and a, or, and, or a firearm. Are you kidding me? You cannot make this stuff up. You cannot make the corruption up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. He thought it was a taser or a firearm. He knew it was a camera. If he thought it was a taser or a firearm, why did he talk to me for so long before he got violent and broke the law and violated my civil rights? He should have been nervous from the get-go then, right? And it's funny how he doesn't mention that he told me that we should talk like real men and he wasn't going to talk to me unless I was on. he wasn't on camera because talking on camera, again, is for real men, right? He goes on to says in parentheses following this incident i conducted an internal search and discovered an internet search excuse me and discovered that amazon sells a streetwise smart cell phone stun gun that gives out 14 million volts and costs 22 dollars and 90 cents i also found a u.s company that invented a gun that looks like a cell phone i don't even know what to say to that if you guys are really paying attention here this is, abs this is absurd. This is absurd. When the male pulled his hand away, he immediately held it and his phone backwards towards my face again. I put it towards his face again two times. At that time, I moved his hand away, causing his cell phone to drop. So the first time, Sergeant Fahey, let's let's get this straight because this is what you're gonna have to this is what you're gonna have to answer in a civil court of law. So the first time you went to go grab my phone and I ripped it away from you and moved it further back behind me, that was you just trying to knock it away. And then the second time you actually grabbed it and threw it, right? And it fell from my hand, right? Come on. Oh man. It went straight down into a bed of mulch. I witnessed. A witness of the incident, again, the bootlicker, Carly Bowers, gave an unsolicited written statement. Unsolicited. Unsolicited, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it should be noted that the man was putting the phone into Sergeant Fahey's face. It had to be approximately five inches away from his face. Crazy. And we read her, we read her statement already regarding... Um, crazy and then this is the, re the, the we read her bootlicker statement this is the best part this is the icing on the cake come on guys hit the like button so we can spread this around because people need to hear this at that point the male was escorted away from the building and back to the center island in the front parking lot 
as he was walking backwards, I was holding on to the bottom portion of his shirt to ensure he didn't trip over a curb or lose his balance and fall backwards. Oh, Sergeant Fahey, so you just grabbed my shirt and started putting your hand into my chest, banging it against my chest. That was all to prevent me from hurting myself and falling backwards because I was walking backwards. You know, people just walk backwards for no reason. It wasn't the fact that you were pushing me backwards and that I was trying to stay in front of you because you were obviously going mental, right? It was because I just decided to walk backwards and then you just grabbed onto my shirt to hold me from falling. You cannot make this stuff up, guys. You cannot make this stuff up. It's insane. On his YouTube video, he describes being violently pushed backwards. But as seen on the body-worn camera footage, this never happened. Wow. The mail and I spoke for a minute, and then when I went to pick up his cell phone from the mulch, I never stopped the phone from recording. You know why he says that? And that you know why the trooper Costello said that? Because in Connecticut, not only is it a federal constitutional crime violation of rights to stop my recording, which he did, he did, but it is also um, a Connecticut, they did a police reform, and it's also a Connecticut law that I can sue him on a state level. So I never stopped the phone from recording, and to the best of my knowledge, the phone, the phone was not damaged. In the video that this male posted on YouTube, he says, I threw the phone 20 feet away. This is a lie. And as stated in the written statement given by Carly Anita Bowers, is that your wife or your cousin, Sergeant Fahey? I don't understand who she is, but she's definitely, wow. The man dropped his phone, and as he was being escorted off the premises, this is also observed on the body-worn camera. After retrieving the phone, I handed it to Detective, not going to say his name, who in turn handed it back to the male. Although he stays, he says his phone is broken, he's clearly observed recording or viewing his recording as he was escorted off the property. I said, you damaged, you broke my phone, the back of my phone, the back of my phone. I never said it stopped working, Sergeant Fahey. Let's pay attention here. You're supposed to be a, you're supposed to be a police officer. Pay attention to the details, okay? Also, he never showed Trooper Costello or Detective that broken phone. Why would I stay there any minute longer? I was just assaulted. My rights were violated. I was trying to get the hell up out of there before you charged me with some other lies, you know, assaulting a police officer. Because if you can make this kind of stuff up, imagine what you would have made up. Two, und two other individuals, a.k.a. bootlickers, Sean Ferris and Joseph Fiorella, provided their information to a trooper at the scene and were willing to give statements. It should be noted that this male posted his video along with his explanation slash lies of the incident, and I have received dozens of phone calls and emails threatening lawsuits and that I should and will be fired and arrested. You should be fired and arrested. You broke the law. You're a supervisor. You're a law enforcement officer. You took an oath to uphold the Constitution. You should be fired and arrested. What's so wrong with that? Two particular emails that are brought to my attention threaten the use of lethal force. Oh, so you can only be the person who uses force, right? Against me. And the writer of one stated, I'd rather be alive on trial for manslaughter with Fahey dead. Another put a photo of my house into an email and the address and name. The house wasn't my house, but the intent was to post my address was there. The video he posted online has 181,000 views, has more than that. And it's going to get more than that after people see this. So... And 4,900 comments, most of which are threatening in manner. So really quick, just to cover all bases here, let's never stoop down to their level and threaten them because then look what they put. They use that as excuses. So let's rise above it. Let's get them where it hurts. Let's hold them legally accountable, legally in the court of law. I know it's not easy, but if we band together and we demand change, we can do it, but we need to do it together. We need to band together. And all these threats are uncalled for, and I do not endorse them. Um, you know, it's just the way it is. But just so you know, Sergeant Fahey, I also receive threats. You know, you don't see me coming on here whining about it. It's the way life is. There's bad people in this world. And guess what, Sergeant Fahey? You are one of those bad people. So I'm going to skip down now, guys, to the conclusion. Again, this is 21 pages. If you want to look at the whole thing, it's on LongIslandArtist.com um they have a list of exhibits the amazon <laughs> it's crazy the amazon taser uh let's go down here findings the police and civilian encounter which occurred in front of the headquarters on july 23rd between Jean paul reyes and sergeant fahey and tro trooper costello was a rapidly evolving incident 
which escalated as Reyes became uncooperative and argumentative towards Sergeant Fahey. That being said, the Connecticut State Police recognize when our personnel falls short in their performance and expectations. In this case, Sergeant Fahey could have been more effective in a timely manner of when and how he deployed de-escalation techniques, reducing the likelihood of the incident escalating to the point in which it did. Sergeant Fahey's conduct fell short of what is expected by CSP personnel, and as it relates to this interaction with Mr. Reyes at the conclusion of their interaction, this performance shortcoming will be addressed administratively by his supervisor. Trooper Costello's actions relative to this incident were found to be within department policy. So let me get this straight. You're going to admonish Fahey administratively, meaning nothing's going to happen to him. Nothing, right? And then Trooper Costello's actions, you know, allowing a, a fellow law enforcement officer to assault and break and steal a journalist's phone, violating his constitutional rights, that's... That's within department policy. We're good. We're good. He pulls out handcuffs to detain a citizen, right, for a sergeant who's breaking the law. But that's within department policy, guys. That's within department policy. But anyway, I wanted to share this with you again. It's all on LongIslandAudit.com. It's insane. But I want to get to one more thing. Also, just to just to show, trooper cleared in Liz, Lisbon shooting. Sergeant Fahey shot a man at a traffic stop. Well, the man was trying to get away in his car, and he deemed the, the the car to be a weapon, and he was cleared by the state's attorney, the new London state's attorney here. You can see this at the Hartford Current. Sergeant Brian Fahey was cleared of all, all wrongdoing in shooting a man. So I want to say thank you to God. Thank you. You know, this could have went a lot worse than me. This man is, he's a tyrant. He's a tyrant, and he's shooting people which is scary. So then I went to, for those of you who don't remember, again, this video will be linked below too. I went to the deputy chief. I went to the state's attorney, the chief state's attorney's office to try and get some justice to try and see if they'll do anything. And I spoke with deputy chief state's attorney, Kevin Waller. I appreciate I appreciate that. If if I can get your card, I Kevin Waller, Deputy Chief State's Attorney. Deputy Chief State's Attorney, Kevin okay. Waller. All right, guys. So that's when I went and spoke to the Deputy Chief, the second in command for the uh state's attorney's office in Connecticut. Now, I did what he said. I wrote him an email explaining everything. And to his credit, Michael Gaylor, who is the state's attorney for the Middlesex um, office in Connecticut, he did email me, Mr. Reyes, since the incident occurred in Middlesex Jur Judicial Jurisdiction District, excuse me, your complaint regarding the incident that occurred on July 23rd at the state police headquarters was referred to me to review. I have the link to the incident and will review it. But I have a few additional questions. You mentioned in your conversation with Inspector Trotrio and De Deputy Chief State's Attorney Lawler that you received a notice from the State Police Internal Affairs Unit. Can you please send me a copy of that to me? Also, you mentioned that your phone was damaged during the encounter. Do you have any photos of the damage or an estimate of the amount of damage? If so, could you forward those to me as well? Thank you. Michael A. Gaylor, State's Attorney, Middlesex, Judicial District. Excuse me. So I emailed him back and I said, Mr. Gaylor, I appreciate you reaching out. Please see attached notice from Captain John Cerruti and his investigation into the incident. Investigation in quotes because it wasn't an investigation, but into the incident involving myself, Sergeant Fahey and Sergeant Costello. I will not send the video as you stated, you already have it. I also, I attach photos of my damaged iPhone 12 Pro. The cost to fix the, bas the black glass on this specific model is $549. Thank you for reviewing this incident. Any further requests? Feel free to contact me, and then I show I give him my name. So this is the right here. This is the um, damage to the back glass of my phone. It was smaller, and then as you guys know, when the phone gets any kind of you know break in it, it spider webs out. So it had a it was it was broken on the back side right over here, and it spider webs out. That's just the way it works. So. You know, I sent in the pit of the front, which had no damage, and the back, which had damage. Again, this is all from him. It falling gracefully from my hand, and this is the finding summary from um, 
the Connecticut State Police. So, guys, that's basically it. That's it's so crazy to me. You know, I don't know what they're thinking. What? How do they lie when it's on camera? Like, you know, I have. It's just a short clip. Let's watch it again. Let's after what you just heard. I think we deserve to watch it again. Let's see exactly. You know, it's a short clip. Let's watch it again. Hey, so how you doing, Sergeant? You videotaping me? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. I, am I don't want to talk here. to you then. If you want to videotape me, then if you want to talk to me like a man, we but, can but, chat. But what, what about problem. what about you guys wear body cameras here? What's the difference? I don't have a body camera. I understand that. What, can I get your name, Sergeant? Yeah, Brian Fahey. Brian Fahey. So have like, a great day. You too. Nice talking to you. You as well. I'll be there with you guys. Right? You're all set here? Excuse me? Are you all set here? Well, yeah, there's nothing else, obviously, you can help me out with at this okay. point. So you're all set, so you can go to, go to IA right, right now, correct? Oh, let's let's keep in. I want you guys to look out for two things as we watch this. Let's see if it, if his phone, as the witness said, uh, my phone or taser or firearm, whatever you want to call it, I guess. I don't know. Let's see how far it was from his face, right? Because he said, it. you know, the witness said it five inches and he said it was so close to his face that he felt scared and he had to act, you know? Yeah, I'll okay. be there. All right. I'm going to be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be going. Okay. So you're gonna stand I, here with your cell phone up. I thought I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should you should get to work. I should I should get to work. Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. All right. Does that look like five inches to you guys? Do you see how I'm putting my camera even further away? Because I don't, I, I, I don't want him to grab it, and I don't want to lose the footage. Because I see he's acting like a tyrant. Look at him putting his hands on me. I willingly walked backwards, right? How can these people lie when there's footage? How do they get away with this? This is what we're fighting for. This is what the people are fighting for. I'm never gonna let this go. I'm gonna hold this tyrant accountable. Look how far my phone is away from this man. The only person who's armed is Sergeant Fahey. Okay. Now let's see if we can catch him grabbing my phone. You see his hand over here, guys? The paper is blocking it. But if you see right here, you see him grabbing my phone and then see how it makes a motion backwards. You see, it's in his hand, and he tosses it right, be right behind him, like he, like a shuffle toss. You see it? Look, grabs it right there, and now the phone's not in my hand, but I dropped it. Right? It's not. I don't care. Right? right? I'm gonna. This is private property. I'm gonna, okay. I'm not doing anything. You're not right, going to videotape me and have an attitude with me. I'll get off of it. Okay. Okay. I'll get but off I'm gonna tell you what right now, dude. Of I'm it. not the Stop. one. All right. Okay. I gave you the information you needed, and I gave you your outlet. Right? You were giving your outlet. I said I No, you wanted to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face. I was you. You see him banging his hand against my chest. What was that? You know, that was a counterbalance technique to keep, to keep me from falling, just like he's grabbing my shirt right here to keep me from falling, right? I thought he grabbed my shirt to keep me from falling over the curb. I don't see any more curbs. We're on the we're on the sidewalk now. What happened? Completely insane. Completely insane. Listen, guys, all the information, there's pub I put all public information to the state's attorney's office who's investigating this guy. The one that emailed me and I emailed him back, haven't heard back from him. So I put all their information in the description below. If you feel the need to petition your grievances to your government over this incident that's your right as united states citizen our first amendment right uh so if you feel the need to do so i will provide all information we need to come together as a community and uh this can't be i have a lawyer and we're currently in the process of filing a federal lawsuit these things take time but you know he's not going to get away with this but i just wanted to show you guys i wanted to show you guys how they act how, how what happens to them what 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 how can they lie like this they lie when it's on camera. Look at this. Look at this. It's insane. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, really. Sometimes I can't believe these things. Real quick before I go, guys, I wanted to also share some good news with you guys. I am starting. I just changed my 1A360 channel. I'm moving in a different direction, and I've now rebranded it as the People's News Network. So we have it right here. Here is the logo. I'm starting this new channel. 
I'm taking my old channel, uh, 1A360, and turning it into the People's News Network, as you see right in front of you right here. This channel is going to be news for the people by the people. We're not only going to be covering auditors' arrests and you know police misconduct, body camera footage, but just regular people. So many of you reach out to me on a daily basis, and it's so hard for me to you know get back to each and every one of you. There's so many injustices in this country that nobody is covering. So I'm going to start my own news network where we're covering all these different injustices. I don't have any videos up now, guys, but I'm working on some content. If you have any injustices with video or you have evidence, you know, let's I'm talking with a few of you right now. Be patient. You know, I'm a one man operation right now. Got a couple of people actually helping me. But, you know, I'm trying to do this all in a timely manner. I think this is a great idea. People's News Network news for the people by the people. Stay tuned. Make sure I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave the comment. I'm going to leave the the link to the channel in the comment section pinned and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be coming out with new videos there, body camera videos, you know, everything that we everything that we couldn't talk about here on Long Island Audit, you know, small stories, big stories, whatever it is, we're going to cover it. I'm going to be doing interviews with attorneys, police officers. Stay tuned for that one. Police officers, active duty police officers. I'll be interviewing them, um, you know, who honor their oath to the Constitution who, and who don't do what Brian Fahey does. And, you know, they honor their oath. And I'll be speaking with them. We're trying to bridge the gap between law enforcement, not lengthen it. So this new channel, I'm really excited about it. I hope you guys are excited about it too. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Show the support. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. I would love to see that get there, you know, within the next couple of days. As always, guys, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. Stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next one. Long Island Audit.